Ralph here from Microjig. Now I know that you've all read and understood the manual that comes with your table saw. So I also know that you know you're not supposed to cross cut using the miter gauge and the rip fence at the same time because it'll cause kickback. But I'm going to explain to you why it's dangerous and I'm going to show you a really cool way to get super accurate cross cuts using the rip fence as your stop safely. Now the reason we don't use the miter gauge and the rip fence together is because once the part separates the, off, the cut part, it's now trapped between the rip fence and the blade. And so it's, there's no question. It's going to catch one of those teeth and it's going to come flying back out at you. And so one of the ways that we can solve that problem is just to take a little scrap of wood, clamp it to our rip fence, and use it as a cross-cut stop. Now, when we go to cut our part, there's some room over here between the rip fence and the blade, a little bit of extra room so that this part can fall off and not necessarily get caught against the blade and kick back out at us. So when this piece separates, I do have three quarters of an inch to allow it to twist a little bit as it comes off the blade but if it twists too much, I can still come into contact with the blade and I can still get a kickback. Using the dado stop from Microjig gives me three advantages. The first is that the contact point that I'm using to reference my crosscut is relatively small. So there's less chance of different cuts orienting off different parts. The second is that with three inches from the rip fence to the blade or the, the marking point, once I have three inches in there, now instead of just the three quarter that we have with the scrap block, now my block can actually fall off and turn fully 45 degrees and it's not going to catch on the blade. So it's safer because it's farther away, it gives that part more room to twist. When the part separates, it can twist 45 degrees. It doesn't matter. I've got more than enough room over here so that it's never going to come into contact with the blade and come kicking back out at me. And of course, the, long, the wider your cut is, the more that hypotenuse angle increases. So the three inches is necessary to give you the space you need so that these parts can't get trapped between the fence and the blade. And the third advantage is accuracy. It's exactly three inches from my rip fence to the end of my dado stop. So if I actually take a minute before I get started and align my dado stop so that it's just touching the blade, the, out, the right side of the blade, now I can reset my indicator on my rip fence to three, exactly three inches, and now whatever cross cut I need to make, I can actually just read right off my rip scale. It will be accurate because I just set it to a known dimension. So we set the dado stop until it's just touching the right side of the blade, calibrate the rip fence indicator, move the dado stop back so that it's out of the way of the part when it's cutting, and now we can set using our rip scale, just adding three inches to whatever we need to do, and now we can cut our parts safely. Microjig. Work safer. Work smarter.